Indy Mogul. has been an interesting year at the box office. Hollywood's efforts to get you away from your home entertainment center and into the theater resulted in ticket prices as high as $20 in some cities. And because of these add-ons to the experience and the cost, both box office and attendance have stayed relatively steady from last year. Sure, they didn't go down, but they didn't go up either. However, there were still some genuine box office hits this year, so let's take a look at the top 10 grossing movies of 2010. Remakes are usually a bad idea, but this one really connected with audiences. In fact, it's the highest grossing movie of the franchise. And when you consider it only costs Sony $40 million to make, no wonder they're trying to fast track the sequel. But Jaden Smith is now a busy guy, as top lining this hit has made him an overnight movie star. All in all, this gift from his parents, who produced the film, couldn't have turned out better. As you're going to see, family movies dominated this year, but How to Train Your Dragon almost didn't. Its opening weekend in March was disappointing, and DreamWorks Animation stock plummeted. However, word of mouth spread that the movie was actually quite good, and it stayed in the top three at the box office for seven weeks. Now a sequel and animated series are all in the works. But there's no topping the ogre. Yes, Shrek continues to be the Mickey Mouse of DreamWorks Animation, consistently contributing to the studio's coffers since 2001. However, this is the lowest grossing Shrek yet, meaning that the studio's promise this was his last adventure is good timing. Now it's time to shine the spotlight on Puss in Boots, who hits theaters with his own movie next year. It wasn't a great year for Universal Studios at the box office, as their next highest grossing movie is Robin Hood at number 21. But the silver lining is that with Despicable Me, Universal is now a major contender in the animation arena. This was also the first film from Illumination Entertainment. That's a production company formed by Chris Melodontri when he left his job as president of 20th Century Fox Animation. I bet right now they really miss him, especially since their highest grossing movie of the year is Date Night at number 23. Harry Potter has been a golden goose for Warner Brothers, and much fanfare has been made over the studio's willingness to allow the franchise to come to an end as J.K. Rowling intended. But like Shrek over at DreamWorks Animation, maybe this is good timing. Despite being the first part of the final film, it only ranks fifth in terms of the franchise's overall box office. And while this movie is still playing, it's unlikely it will reach the heights of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the first and still the most successful of all the films. What does this mean for part two hitting theaters this summer? Maybe audiences have already said goodbye to Harry. Christopher Nolan doesn't need a dark night to scale the tops of the box office. He has his own toys. With Inception, Nolan went back to his favorite subject, the landscape of the mind. It's something he's explored throughout his career with little box office success, until now. And while Leonardo DiCaprio, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Tom Hardy, and Marion Cotillard all impressed audiences with their roles, it was Nolan that was cemented as the true movie star, with his fans 100% behind him. Sorry, but there's no denying that audiences are on Team Twilight. The franchise is holding steady, with this film and New Moon practically tied at the box office. But it won't be holding steady for long, as the final film, broken into two parts a la Harry Potter, will finally culminate in the act the entire franchise has been building towards, Edward and Bella having sex. And that's why these movies are so successful. The original Iron Man helped cement the current quality state of the superhero genre, and two years later it continues to do so, making just as much as its predecessor. But even more importantly, the success of Iron Man 2 proves that comic book publishers know their product best. This is all part of Marvel Studios' roadmap to create the ultimate superhero franchise, leading to the Avengers movie in summer 2012. A plan that has inspired Warren Brothers to bring DC Comics further in-house, creating DC Entertainment to compete. Let the battle of the superhero movies begin. Who wins? We do. Some of you loved it, some of you hated it, but there's no denying you all went to see it, as Alice in Wonderland was a huge box office success. Not only is it Tim Burton's most successful film ever, not only did it further prove that audiences like their depth with character, and not only has it created a new subgenre of live action fairy tales for adults, but it is one of only two films this year to cross the one billion mark worldwide. The other is the number one film of the U.S. box office as well, Toy Story 3. 
Yes, it has been an incredible year for Disney as they are the studio behind the top two grossing films of the year, here and worldwide. And for all time worldwide, these two are the fifth and sixth biggest grossing films. Furthermore, both of these were in IMAX and 3D, and both made it onto another top 10 list, your picks in Beyond the Trailer's annual viewer poll. So even though the industry is changing in many ways, it's nice to see that the cream still rises to the top. Happy New Year, and see you in 2011 for a whole new slate of movies.